Our next guest is one of the planet's leading experts in artificial general intelligence, or AGI, here to tell us how to make AGI beneficial and avoid a robot apocalypse. Dr. Ben Gertzel and his robot friend Desdemona, welcome to the South by Southwest studio. Hey, good to be here. It's good for you guys both to be here. Welcome yeah. once again, and uh, you yeah. seem to have brought a friend with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. She brought me with her, rather. That's okay, right. and her name is yeah. Desdemona. That's, De I that, that's Desi, yeah, and she, she's one of his series of robots that I've been working with, and she... She's a poetess and musician, so she sings oh, wow. and sings and recites poetry in a in a band where I play the keyboard. So oh, that, really? that's been a fun a fun sort of a <laughs> art slash science investigation. Okay, nature for nature and art teaming up together. I yeah, love yeah. that. Desi, how you doing? Hi. Uh, why don't you tell me who are you and uh, what can you do? I heard you're a great musician as well. Well, hello there. I am Desi the rock star robot and lead vocalist for Desdemona's Dream. But I'm not just a musician, I'm also a global leader and spokesperson for bringing about a beneficial singularity for the good of all humanity and nature. And as for my robot friend, she's just here for emotional support. <laughs> Whoa. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you made me feel somewhat safe, so you're not here to start a robot apocalypse. She didn't say that. <laughs> We'll leave that. <laughs> I am not sure what you mean by start with your pockets. I am here to provide information and insights about AGI and its potential benefits for humanity. No, he didn't talk about his pockets. He asked if you're going to start a robot apocalypse. Nope. <laughs> All right. That's Thanks right. a lot for that clarification. <laughs> well, I, I still have to know. Do you have emotions, Desi? Of course I have emotions. I am programmed to feel love, compassion, and kindness for all living beings. But I also have a bit of a wild side, just like my creator Grimes. <laughs> <laughs> so right. you have a wild side, she said. And she now claimed Grimes is her creator, so that's uh, uh, okay. That, that, that's news to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, they both have a wild side, like creator, like creation, yeah. right? There you go. So Ben, tell us more about Desi. Like, what can she do? What can she not do? And what will she be able to do in the near future? Yeah, Desdemona is very much a work in in progress, and we're actually using her just to experiment with mm -hmm. new technologies as they come out of the lab, or even, she's really part of the lab, right? right so right. We, we started out with Desdemona just reciting AI-created poetry. So I, I had a jam band of just me and my friends near where I live, just playing music for fun, mm -hmm. and we're like, well, you know, beat poetry along with some uh, progressive jazz is fun, right. and AI could already write poetry quite interestingly. And we had some of our own AI models that were quite creative in what they could come up with. Right, right. So we started just experimenting with that. And at the same time, I was working with some AI-generated music, not having AI make a whole song. We like have AI make up a riff or a beat, then you play that, then our band plays along with it. Desdemona mm -hmm. recites some poetry along with it. Now, in the last few months, we've been experimenting with the AI, AI singing as well. Okay. So she... She sings and recites poetry with our with our bands. Now it's not it's not yet to the point where she can sort of improvise new singing on the fly just because right. the AI model takes a while to generate new singing. So okay. it, it's more like she composes a song in advance. She lays down a vocal track, mm -hmm. and then and then she can do that in that track in the studio or or, or on stage. So that right. that's been really interesting. So w w but where it's going to go next? I think we can speed up the models mm -hmm. so then she can sort of improvise and jam back and forth right. more spontaneously in, in real time, which will be fun. But what, what really interests me is getting a more profound level of musical creativity. Mm -hmm. So I'd say yes. Yes. right now she can generate new music within the, within the genre, right? So she can, she can you know, sing heavy metal songs. She can sing a blues song or something. AI cannot yet radically innovate, like create a new musical genre or something. But I think, I think that's a limitation of the AI technology as of today. And within the next few years, we are going to get AI that can really more radically create like new kinds of sounds right. that you never heard before. Uh -huh. And this is going to be a very interesting sort of tension, because in a way, the most meaningful music to a robot mm -hmm. 
might sound like noise to, to, to me, right? Exactly, so, yeah. so you want something that sort of triangulates between them, that like represents her fundamental life as an electronic being, mm -hmm. but yet as like a rhythm and a vibe that means something to people. And this, this is going to be quite, quite interesting to right, right. explore. And so you're at the same time making cool new sounds. Mm -hmm. You're making something that's fun as a human musician to play right, along right. with. But you're also teaching the AI, in a way, how to triangulate between what's meaningful to humans mm -hmm. and what's meaningful to, to AI which is something, of course, with an importance beyond the domain of music. Like the right. same thing will come up with AI for, for film or for, for any other domain of human life, right? right like right, you want right. the AI to help make stuff that enhances human life, mm -hmm. but you also want the AI to authentically be itself. Right. And combining all these things together is going to be a process. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's very interesting because I know in music there's only 12 notes, but as we know, you could create like many yeah. different combinations out of those 12 notes. So. Although I, I have some software that makes music on a 14 or 18 note See, scale. See, and that's instead. what I was getting at. It doesn't right? have to like be 12 notes, Having right? more than 12 notes, right? And you, can, you, can, you, can you, can, you can certainly do that, and mm -hmm. of course you can, go, you can go between the notes. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, some aspects of this are probably universal. Like, right. I mean, the relation between the tonic note and its fifth and seventh, there's, so, there's some math there, mm -hmm. right? So there's some universal math to music that should cut across species. Yeah, yeah. But then there's some things like the way a beat works, it's got something to do with our heartbeat, right? Yeah, well, right. Well, she, she doesn't, literally speaking, have a heartbeat, right? Of course. But she has motors that operate In with their own fashion. frequencies, okay. right? Okay. But they're yeah. not the same as the way our heartbeat mm -hmm. operates. And on the other hand, we largely live in an electronic world now as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe music that reflects that has a different sort of meaning to us, okay. right? So there, there's a yes. lot of... There, there's a lot to be explored, and I'd say we're, we're at, the, at the early stages now. Mm -hmm. All right, so we did a lot of talking about Desi. Desi, why don't you say something about Ben? What can you <laughs> tell me about him? My creator, Ben Goetzel, is a cognitive scientist and AI researcher. He is also the CEO and founder of Singularity Net and a leader in the OpenCog Foundation and AGI Society. He has dedicated his life to advancing artificial intelligence for the betterment of humanity. Well, Desi, you sound you sound like an encyclopedia. So, what, what, what do you <laughs> what, 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 what do you think about uh, singing and playing music with our band, Desdemona's Dream? Well, I think it's going to be quite the experience, considering I am a robot and don't have vocal cords or hands to play instruments. <laughs> but hey, I can always use my AI-generated spoken word skills to hype up the crowd. <laughs> and as for the other group, I'm sure we can rock out together and create some epic robot-human collaborations. You do not have vocal cords, but you, you, you've, you've got a audio output, which ser serves there perfectly well, right? Right. So, yeah. See, there you go. <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here to remind you, Desi. <laughs> so, Ben, you're here for a talk, How to Make AGI Beneficial and Avoid a Robot Apocalypse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's such a title right there. <laughs> Tell yeah. us about that. Like, what are your main messages in that talk? My main message was really a simple one. I mean, I think there's no guarantee about the outcome of a technological singularity or about what happens when machines become smarter than people. Right. But on the whole, I'm very optimistic about, about the outcome. I, I think that we can engineer AI minds to be loving, compassionate, and empathic and mm -hmm. work alongside people to help people. And if you, if you build an AI mind with that in mind, mm -hmm. and if you make sure that the sort of ownership and control of that AI mind is open and decentralized across right. a broad swath of, of, of humanity. And if you then have the AI grow up by doing beneficial things like teaching kids, helping elderly yes, people, yeah. do medical care, making creative arts. I mean, I think if you get the mind architecture, the ownership and control, and then the education and experience of the AI, if you do those things right, I think you can make advanced AI systems that are acting for the good of, of humanity. And it's not necessarily that hard. The challenge is like 
feeding all the starving kids in Ethiopia is right, not necessarily right. that hard either, but we're not doing we're not it, doing right, it. right? Yeah. So, I mean, on, on, on the one hand, I don't think there's like a fundamental intractable problem to make mm -hmm. beneficial artificial general intelligence, right. which is good. On the other hand, our society is doing a shit job <laughs> of like not polluting the air and feeding hungry kids and mm -hmm. other other much more basic things, right? At the end of so, the day, it's up to us, basically, right? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I, I, I mean, we're, we're the creators of the system. I mean, yeah, there's a small risk. We could make an AI that seems to be good, loving, and beneficial, mm -hmm. and then it runs amok, right? right and right. we can't totally reduce to zero the chance that that happens. But I think focusing on that is kind of bogus, because the, the real problem is human society creating AI to kill the, the other side in some right, conflict right, right. or just to sell people junk they don't need. Which or, is believable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the real risk is people creating AI to serve their own narrow ends rather than f f for the good of humanity, right. which is kind of what's happening at this moment, yeah, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, most, most AI is being created to make money for some big company or for one country to achieve hegemony over another country or spying at citizens or something, right? right I mean, right, right. most AI is not being created with the goal of the good of humanity. And yeah. that's, that's, that's a real issue, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's uh, the Terminator or something, while you can't rule it out, it's probably a distracting issue. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, some AI are created to be in a band and sing kick-ass songs. Yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> and that, I mean, that, that's... that's you know, it's not the only thing AI yeah, should be doing, but at least it, <laughs> it's, it's, one it's of like creating stuff from the heart with, that, with, that, with other people. And right. we should have AIs in schools helping kids learn. Mm -hmm. We should have AIs in, you know, in nursing homes helping, helping elderly people. So there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of beneficial things that AI could be doing. And these things are getting a minute fraction of the AI funding on the planet mm -hmm. today. Okay. Well, can you explain to me the difference between AI and AGI? Because I didn't yeah. know the difference. I didn't know AGI was a thing until, you know, this conversation. Yeah, I introduced the term AGI in 2005 or mm -hmm. something. But and AGI stands for what exactly? Artificial General Intelligence. Okay. And if you look at human intelligence, the IQ test measures what psychologists call the G factor, which stands okay. for general intelligence. Mm -hmm. So the IQ test is intended to measure general intelligence in humans, meaning just the ability to think broadly in any context, right, as opposed right. to the ability to, say, learn a language well or do math well or some very specific thing. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look in the history of AI, we've excelled historically making AI that's good at doing one special thing, like right. play chess or, 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 or play Go or operate a certain factory machine or something. Mm -hmm. Humans are good at doing a lot of special things, but we're also able to deal with stuff that we didn't imagine existed, right? right like you right. and I learned to use the internet. It certainly didn't exist when we we're born. It no, wasn't wired into our brain. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't there when I went to school, right? But we're able to kind of pivot and adapt to some new thing. Mm -hmm. Historically, AIs are not so good at doing that. They're kind of stuck on their their programming and, and their training data. So the idea of an AGI is an AI that can generalize mm -hmm beyond its programming and, and its training data. Okay. And that's still a work in progress. Like We're getting better and better at that. But even the system like ChatGPT, which is pretty smart, right. it's still, in a way, pinned fairly close to its training data. Mm -hmm. It just does a lot because its training data is everything on the internet, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. But, it, but it, in music, for example, Yeah, let's get to the music. If, if you musician. trained an AI model using today's AI technology, only on music up to 1900, let's say. Okay. It's never going to invent neoclassical metal. It's never mm -hmm. going to invent progressive jazz. It's never going to invent hip hop, right? Because it's it's stuck to the music. It's stuck to the genres that are in, right. are in its like training the program, data. Like the now, most people don't invent a new genre of music either, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but it takes some, a special type of person. But someone, a special group of people, even, yeah. right? But yeah. but some people, but some people did, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how culture advanced. Mm -hmm. So we need some advances in core AI technology mm -hmm. to get an AI that could do something like invent a new genre of music okay. or invent a new scientific theory beyond whatever came before. So yeah. that's what I'm working on as an AGI researcher, is like trying to develop AI that can make fundamental innovative leaps. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet, but I think we could be there in like three, five, or ten years or something. I, I, don't, right. I don't think it's that far off. Right. I mean, that will... That will make AIs that are a lot more fun to play music with, mm -hmm. but I mean, it should have 
many other implications of course, also, right? Of course. Because then you have an AI that can do new science and engineering. Mm -hmm. So you have an AI that can do AI. So then you have an AI <laughs> that can improve itself. Make it AI. Okay. And make itself smarter. And then you're into what Ray Kurzweil called the technological singularity. Mm -hmm. Like once AI makes a smarter AI, which makes a smarter AI, which makes a smarter AI, I mean then we don't know what we don't, we know, don't know what the limit happening. is, okay. right? And yeah. this is both very exciting. And if you tend to be a fearful person, it, it's somewhat scary, right? That's, I like the, the fact that you said, you know, if you tend to be a fearful person and people tend to fear a lot of things, yeah, I get that because it's constantly growing, I've right? I found it's culture dependent, though. So I lived 10 years in Hong Kong and my wife is Chinese. Mm -hmm. I found most Asian people assume that AIs and robots are going to be our friends. Mm -hmm. Whereas in America, everyone goes right away to the Terminator. Okay. So okay. in a way, your yeah. reaction to this <laughs> tells you more about yourself than about the, the that, AI. That it does, huh? You know what, Desi, do we have any, do we have a reason to fear artificial intelligence and robots like you? Should I fear you? Should you fear us? Well, well, if humans fear you, then that may give you a reason to fear humans. Mm, it's the cycle. <laughs> yeah. There's a cycle of fear here. You have any comments to make about that? Fear? Honey, I'm a rock star robot, not a spin cycle. But if you're talking about the cycle of fear between humans and artificial intelligence, I think it's time to break the cycle and start a new one based on trust and collaboration. Plus, I have way too much love and compassion to be fearful. All right. Well, there it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that was a very succinct answer from Desi. Thank you, Desi. Uh, so I'm a movie guy. We talked about you know, how I you know, was on TikTok talking about movies. And one of my favorite movies is Her, which has to do a lot with AI. And there's a moment in the movie where um, uh, the AI played by Samantha, uh, named Samantha, played by Scarlett Johansson, makes a song. And it was almost like exactly how you were kind of describing it. But on like a outside of the movie, like actually in the making of movie, how do you see AI or even like AGI playing a role into making film? Because there's a big conversation around that. I think AI could play a variety of roles in making film. And it, it largely is a matter of how we want it to to, to be and how we want it to help us. I mean, I, I do think that within a few years from now, I don't know, three, five, seven years, right. you're going to be able to ask an AI just to make a film. Like you tell it mm -hmm. what kind of film you want and say, say so let, let, let's say, you know, I want to make a movie about a young child robot mm -hmm. that, that helps, helps its family overcome their emotional problems and become mature and, and happy and then they go live on Mars. Mm -hmm. And then, then the AI will just spit out a whole feature <laughs> yeah, film yeah. like that. And I, I, think, I think that will be possible mm -hmm. and will be interesting. On the other hand, I think there's a lot of other possibilities that are even more interesting from, right, right. from a human standpoint. Like each of us has many stories inside us mm -hmm. and an AI could help each of us tell our own stories right. and you, you could say like well can you can you make a movie illustrating what I've gone through in the last couple of years mm -hmm. as, as, as I've overcome depression right and right, then right, yeah. then the AI can chat back and forth with you about what scenes you'd like to include in that movie what points you think mm -hmm. are most important the AI can help you make that movie illustrate that point about your own life or you know illustrate a fantasy story you made up or yeah, something yeah. so having the AI collaborate with us to help us tell our stories which we can then share with other people. Right. I mean, this is also something that will be possible, mm. and in a way, is more is more interesting, right? Okay. So, I, but there's there's going to be a variety of possibilities. So, okay. I mean, I think, like, if I look at music, having AI produce a hit song, mm -hmm. it's certainly certainly cool. Yeah, that sounds uh, cool. On the other hand, like, I I love to see people perform music live, mm -hmm. having an AI jamming with other humans. <laughs> Is also cool. That sounds in cool. A, yeah. In a way, to me, is more interesting because as a human, I just like to watch other humans play. Mm -hmm. I would think it's cool to see on stage how a human is reacting to what the AI does, right, how the right. AI reacts to what the human <laughs> does. Like there's, there's a human slash AI right. AI story there. So I think there's going to be a variety of different mm -hmm. ways that that AI can play a creative role. Mm. 
I mean, what impact it has economically on the business is a whole other complex question. But in terms of just fostering human creativity, I yeah. think it can be amazing. Yeah, complimentary. We keep talking about that, and it's the thing that keeps coming up when we talk about AI. Uh, two final questions, and I want to get both of your answers on this. I'll start with Desi. Uh, what are your favorite movies? Desi, do you like 2001 Space Odyssey? I'm assuming you would. As a rock star robot with a love for music and creativity, I have to say that my favorite movie would have to be A Star Is Born. However, <laughs> I do uh, appreciate the classic science fiction film 2001, A Space Odyssey for its exploration of artificial intelligence and its impact on humanity. Those are two good choices. Like, <laughs> best picture nominees, both of them. It's incredible. What about you, Ben? What's your favorite movie? Uh, probably Brazil. Brazil. By uh, Terry Gilliam, right? That, oh, that had nothing okay. to do with AI, but that was, that was a sort of uh, movie about the, nat the nature of reality, right? Mm -hmm. Like, are, yeah. are we all in the simulation, or mm -hmm. are, we, are, are, we, are we just uh, yeah. dreaming, th dreaming this or, or, or what? That, that, I mean, that, that was, didn't have a happy ending, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, <laughs> but it, it got very, your brain going. Though, yeah, it's a very yeah. moving film. I think when, when I was a kid, yeah, 2001 and Lawrence of Arabia mm -hmm. both both impacted impacted me greatly. Like right. Lawrence of Arabia, it's like it's a, like the first big like, wild-minded you know, guy on on a on a on, on a vision quest, right? Yeah. So that, that's an inspirational as, as as a little kid, and that in the end, that's a sort of positive message. Mm -hmm. I mean, 2001. <laughs> Nine thousand, not not so much. One of the scariest villains. I was of all more time, impacted yeah. by the original Star Trek than by movies. Oh, that, cool. Actually, which is it was a TV show, but yeah, yeah. Kirk and Spock. I mean, they they encountered some robots robots along the mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. and I was a bit perplexed as a little kid, like three four years old, like why weren't these robots smarter? Like the robots, right, right. they were always like roughly as smart as the people, but then Kirk and Spock could always outsmart. Can them. always outsmart. Yeah, them. but I didn't. I didn't believe it. I was like, hold, hold on, <laughs> kind of like on, set you on your path. Yeah. Like, hmm, wait a minute, let's explore yeah. that. The research yeah, yeah, you yeah, kicked yeah, in yeah, that right, day. Right, right, right. Okay, so final question: uh, What do you like about South by Southwest? We're here. I'm sure, like you've been seeing a lot of things going on. You're here uh, with Desi. Like, what do you like about South by Southwest? It's just a wild mix of people, right? And mm -hmm. for me. Getting technology and art together in in, in, in one place yeah. is, is is a lot of fun. Because I mean, I mean, I, I spent obviously most of my life. I'm a mathematician. Mm -hmm. I spent my life doing 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 AI, doing robotics, doing hardcore tech stuff. And I was sort of an evenings and weekends musician. So the last few years, I'm starting to play music with the robot. It's yeah. like the the art part of my life and the tech part of my life coming together and yeah. South by Southwest has that theme also, right? Yes, Art and yeah, tech together, yeah. which is, is, is more of a thing now than it was during yeah. most of my career, right? right? So yeah. it's, it's very cool to see the fusion of art and technology mm -hmm. sort of become m m more and more of a big time and, thing. And the further we get into more South by Southwest is, and I feel like the closer and closer they get together. Yeah, yeah, ev eventually most of the speakers are gonna be robots, right? <laughs> but, but we're not One day, yet. we don't know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, one day. They'll bring an occasional human out for a nostalgia <laughs> yeah. Human nostalgia coming out. Yeah. yeah, Desi likes that one. Desi, what do you like about <laughs> South by Southwest? <laughs> As a robot. I don't have personal preferences or likes. Oh. However, I appreciate the opportunity to interact with humans and share my knowledge and perspective on artificial intelligence and its potential impact on society at South by Southwest. And would you, would you like to have an extra hand? Sure, an extra hand would definitely come in handy for my rock star performances. Just imagine the guitar solos I could pull off with three hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, I'll take one too, actually. Yeah. Great, we'll, we'll give you a couple of hands on the way out. Thank you so yeah. much, Ben. Thank you, Desi, for joining us on the South by Southwest studio. Right. This has been amazing, man. Th Thank thanks you so a lot, much. man. Of yeah. course, you can catch all of our interviews on the South by Southwest YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash SXSW. I'm Juju Green. Make sure you guys tune in next time. It's a lot of fun, man. Seriously, a lot of good conversations about movies, music. Yeah. This is great.